We know that so many quilters out there love making special projects for the holidays. And so today, we are making a gorgeous table topper for Christmas. It's a beautiful diamond log cabin project made by Diane Tomlinson out of wonderful holiday fabrics. It's gorgeous. On today's program, you will learn how to fussy cut patchwork pieces using a special technique, how to incorporate striped fabrics into log cabin blocks, and how to construct and join diamond log cabin blocks. Funding for Fonz and Porter's love of quilting is provided by... For over 40 years, Baby Lock has been dedicated to the love of sewing by creating machines for sewing, embroidery, quilting, and serging. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Koala Studios delivers sewing furniture custom built in America. American Professional Quilting Systems, APQS, offers a full line of hand-guided quilting machines made in America's heartland for America's artisans. The Oliso ProZone Smart Iron, featuring the auto lift, engineered for the professional quilter and sewing enthusiast. Andover Fabrics, makers of a variety of fabrics available at independent quilt shops and fabric stores. Coates and Clark, your source for sewing and quilting threads. OmniGrid, providing quilters with specialty rulers and accessories for over 25 years. Quilters Club of America, offering patterns and videos to the passionate quilter. We're delighted to be with you today on Love of Quilting. You're watching the 1600 series, and my co-host for this series is my daughter, Mary Fonz. I'm happy to be here as usual, and today's project is very exciting. It's inspired by the holiday season. Uh, this table topper uh, that you can see on our tip table was designed and created by Diane Tomlinson, who I believe is on your staff. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's this gorgeous uh, poinsettia-looking design for the top of your table. And she worked with a beautiful set of fabrics, a wonderful coordinated group of holiday fabrics and mm -hmm. sometimes you wonder what to do with those special fabrics and she certainly found a great great project mm -hmm. and it's made up of two different blocks these diamond blocks uh, one is the log cabin sort of traditional log cabin done design. in a diamond yeah. exactly done in a diamond and then uh, a block that we're calling the picture block so let's uh, <laughs> let's, let's take, take a look, look at yeah them. yeah we've laid out loose blocks on our sewing center here just so you can kind of see what goes into each one of them the diamond log cabin block that's on your left uh, it's a non-traditional shape for log cabin, but it's traditional in that there's a light half and a dark half. Okay. So she's put her light background fabrics on one side of her center diamond mm -hmm. and dark fabrics on the other as she made her rounds. Really a nice way to pop the contrasts of this uh, fabric line that she chose to work with. Right. Mm -hmm. And the other block, the picture block, has this uh, fussy cut uh, center motif, you know, this design uh, in this fabric. There was a sleigh and also an angel, a darling little angel, and she cut uh, those center pieces so that she would sh showcase those images and then put uh, a light log around that center uh, piece and then a dark log to finish right. it off. So the logs on the picture blocks is go around like a frame. Right. Rather, and they, they, they go on like a frame on both cases, but the, the visual effect on the diamond log happens is a dark and light half. Exactly. That's what forms that center star. Exactly. So I think probably what really inspired Diane at the beginning was this beautiful fabric. Mm -hmm. And we've got angel motifs. Let's just spread it out a little bit here. I'm gonna, let's open it fully. Yeah, unfurl it. Okay, it's unfurl so pretty. It's beautiful. And so you can see here that she had, there's, there are two major motifs on this um, fabric, the angels and the sleigh. Mm -hmm. So she very cleverly used one of our rulers, the diamond ruler, this to guy. cut those from the fabric. So what she did is take this diamond, and we're going to use this also for cutting our strips, this diamond mm -hmm. ruler, and used it as a fussy cut template. Mm -hmm. And the fabric company was very accommodating in that there are these motifs out here that if I work with my um, uh, lines on my ruler to try to get this little dot in the same place mm -hmm. on both corners, then I know that I've centered this fabric. And one really great, I think, a method that, that she used, and even if she didn't, it's a good one to, to use when you're doing this, is if you take a dry erase marker, obviously a dry erase is important, not a permanent marker. Yeah. You don't want to uh, ruin your ruler. But, but if you want to just sketch out sort of the lines on your template of what you're fussy cutting, if it's an image like this, it can really help you for when you place your other 
uh, mm -hmm. when you when you cut out your other sleighs because you kind of know how to line it up so you have another guide by which right. to go so when go she on. so when we cut this which we're going to do mm -hmm. and then we go on to the next one we take our ruler over here and reposition it for the next piece and we, we not only do we have these little points to work with we all also have the sleigh exactly so let's cut out one to show how that works and you so know we'll put it back and it's easy to put back yeah for this particular um, fabric a blue a blue marker worked best we, we tried a black one but it kind of got your, lost thank right you here. oh yeah it shows up better for the camera and better right. for our eyeballs on yep this. <laughs> right. this. okay so, I'm gonna step aside so I'm gonna give you plenty of elbow room lots of room and we've we've mentioned before how you know fussy cutting can make you sad that you're making Swiss cheese out of your fabric but you know a, a quilter who's inspired by lots of different things can save those scraps and use them in right. other projects. Let's see if you came through. Yeah, perfect. Come through. Okay. Now, can you get that other one? I don't one? know. That one's, <laughs> this is not the, it's kind of awkward, but. Oop. Wait, you got to go next to the. Oh, I'm, I'm it's off. very hard to cut that way, but you know, it, it doesn't matter because I think you got it this time. Because, I think I got uh, it. That's just waste anyway. Yeah. Now, let's see. Did you get unhooked at all? Oh, Did I do it? Yay. That. Yay. Okay, so that's, <laughs> that's our sleigh. And I'm just going to put this the fabric over here on the shelf. Okay. Right. Okay. So that's that. Okay, and I'm glad you wiped that off because I, th oh, let's see, we're not going to, we're not going to go there next. Next, we're going to show some more of the fabrics that she used. Right. So let's bring that pile out. Right. We'll just set our little sleigh over there. There's a lot of parts to this there project. Are. So, you know, we were saying that Diana was working with this beautiful group of fabrics, and one of the fabrics in the group was a stripe. Right. And she was very clever because she actually used some of those stripe fabrics for some of her logs. She knew that she wanted uh, one inch finished logs, is mm -hmm. that right? Yep. So she needed to cut her pieces one and a half. Right. So she looked through her stripes to find ones that she could cut and have that one inch finished mm -hmm, log. Mm -hmm. So she got a dark strip by using this stripe. Right. She got a light strip out of this one. I meant to line them up so that they're right there. Yep. And then this is really interesting because this is she had to kind of use two stripes to right. get it to be an inch or three inch. really I mean yeah if you count that and, what's, and what's so smart about how she did that is obviously it looks even more intricate when she's sewn it all together because right. it looks like ribbon or that that you know she, that these are all individual pieces but of course she cut it so it looks more intricate than it really is she got a great effect she uh, sort of by fooled doing the eye. that yeah she did and here's another dark strip so mm -hmm. she got a lot of use she didn't really have a lot of waste on that stripe right. Now, she still needed more dark and light fabric, mm -hmm. so there were still yet other ones in the group. Right, and they didn't come from this piece, but right. from the other, other fabric um, in the story. Right. Is that the, what you call it, yeah, the story? Yeah, it would be a story. Mm -hmm. So she's got a poinsettia, she's got little sleighs, some holly, and yet another real rich dark fabric, and, and then the red. red. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, we've now shown you all the fabrics that go into this yeah. beautiful project. Right. Okay, so let's move that out to okay. the side again. I'm going to give you these stripes because okay. we've had a chance to feast our eyes on them. Right. Okay, okay I'll take and those. I'm going to need that little sled one too. Okay, so our center, and let's have that dark, the one, oh, here it is. Here it is. Yeah, I okay. kind of covered it up. That's okay. So this was what is her center. Right. And for the log cabin block. Right. right. For the log cabin block, you're going to start with a diamond shape in the middle. And traditional log cabins start with a square in the middle, but the diamond is just, you know, it's kind of, I think somebody one day thought, oh, I can, I, instead of squares, I can use diamonds. Exactly. So we're going to cut diamonds that are our center. Do you want me to do that? Yep, you, you go ahead. Okay. Um, okay. So let's look at our ruler here. And this ruler shows you your finished sizes in the yellow circle. So we want a diamond in the middle that finishes two inches right. on the sides. It's a little bit bigger than the logs mm -hmm. that go around. So you want the two, two in the mm -hmm. middle and that little circle. And that shows us we want a two and a half inch wide strip. Great. Okay. Now, when you position this, this ruler on the strip, if I get my two inch line over here, I have to take a look. Well, I'd mm -hmm. actually be okay, but let me show you how I wouldn't be okay. Right is if my line comes along here and I cut into this, I'm going to have selvage You're in going my into the selvage, so, so it's important off. to give yourself lots of room right. on either side. Right. you got to back off so that you have plenty of um, fabric there because right. of the long side. Okay, so I'm going to cut my, make my first cut, and I think I'll just slide down here, leave that for a moment. Okay. So here's my two-inch line like this. And of course, this one, because I was careful, mm -hmm. I had kind of overcut so that I have a diamond Plenty here. Of room. So, this is the starting point for the diamond log cabin strips. Mm -hmm. Okay? Great. All right. So, I'm going to bring over the, uh, 
the example here. Right. And this is your strip for the first right. log, right? So let's examine this. I'm going to move it a little bit over here so we can, can look at it better. So here's our center that's this kind of Christmas tree fabric. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's the boughs of a tree. And so the, we're going to add these logs in clockwise formation. Mm -hmm. So this is our first strip that we're showing everybody at mm -hmm. home. And we add that on, we trim, then we add this other light, mm -hmm. then we're going to add our first dark and our second dark, and we just keep going around. In a clockwise direction. Right. And, and one thing uh, in this project, and you know details for this project, uh, where you can find this pattern, where you can find uh, techniques, and, and where you can find the, uh, uh, the rulers that we use uh, uh, for this project are all found at fonsimporter.com. You can go there and see where all of this information right. is to, to, to make this. Uh, go to the TV section of the website, right. and you'll find 1600 series, and that'll take you where you need to list our sponsors, it'll list the supplies and everything. Lots of good information and one of the things that is uh, um, good to know about 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 doing this block is that or a tip for it is that the the light is on the right as you're looking at it. You yeah. want to keep all your lights together when you're the sewer. and your darks together. Yeah, when you're the sewer it's going to be on your right and you want to go in a, in a clockwise direction. So I know that I want to take this little sleigh fabric and I want to add it to this side. I'm going to stitch here and then I'm going to open this out and cut parallel lines with my side. So I don't want to start like this. I want to have plenty of fabric mm -hmm. over here. Okay. So, and I'm going to turn it over so I can see where my little diamond starts and stops. It's really fun working with um, a, uh, a group of fabric like this because mm -hmm. it is, you know, the coordinating has been done for you. Exactly. I'm going to cut that off. Okay. Okay. So now we bring this back mm -hmm. and we're going to fold this out. And I'm just going to finger press it real carefully like this. Okay. Then I want to cut my edges off. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I moved I, all the equipment. <laughs> I took your, no, I took your glove <laughs> away. That was my fault. And I'll take the, the long ruler mm -hmm. right there. And I'm going to carefully line up and I can actually even get my 60 degree on here. That's a really helpful line yeah. in that ruler, that 60 degree. It's sort Let's of like, see. didn't we say it was like landing the lunar, yeah, the right, lunar module, get all like getting off. Okay, all. I'm gonna go like this. Here we go. So here's my 60 de degree line on my mm -hmm. ruler. I'm putting with, on the raw edge of my center mm -hmm. diamond, okay. And it's important to take the time to it do really this It really is, carefully. especially with this project. I mean, with any project, you want to be precise, you know, but right. uh, it's uh, with all these logs going on, it's, uh, it can be kind of confusing if you don't take your time. And it'd be tempting to cut this off, but I don't want to run out of that fabric. Right. So I want to, let's see, get my 60 degree. There's my 60 degree line okay. right there. It's running sure. along the raw edge. Sure. And I'm lining this up. Oh, it looks good. It does. Okay. So now... Our next step is to add the next log, mm -hmm. and it's going to go right here. Right, and so, again, you're going to leave that, leave right. that and edge. Right, you can almost eye this, that you know we want to be sure and have enough fabric to go all the way. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put them right sides together. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we're using red thread because that's what shows up on television uh, better, but there is some really awesome uh, metallic thread out there these days that is... That's for the quilting, though. Right, for right. the quilting, um, and, and it's just really a nice touch when you have metallics in your fabric. You can sort of tie it all together when you uh, do any sewing on this project with right. that metallic thread. Well, on the uh, the machine quilting that Diane did, she used that metallic thread, and I, I, I know we're, we uh, gave everybody a good look at that quilt, and uh, I'm not, you know, I think she kind of went in the ditch. I don't know how well it shows, but if you look closely, it's there. Okay, so first lights are on. We open this out, mm -hmm. and again, we're going to line this up. I'm going to do it so I can have my 60 degree line mm -hmm. down here. Okay. Of course, the mm -hmm. log cabin blocks take a, a little longer than the picture blocks because you have to do more right. of the. Right. You have to do that, uh, do the technique. But well, and you know, you. I think we just have six six log cabin blocks. Right. Come together in the center, and then the picture blocks. So really, you don't have to make so many. See, when you're cutting that long angle, you need a lot mm -hmm. of space out here. Okay, so my 60 degree line is on here, and so now our round has begun. So the next steps 
are to add our dark logs. And what we're, since these seams are long, we're going to show you what happens when you make these blocks. Okay, so here we've got the, the first light, mm -hmm. the first dark round. Then the next step is to put the second light round on. Right. In clockwise fashion. It's such a cool effect. Log it's... cabins are just awesome. Okay. Yep. Now we have our third light on. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we have our third dark. We're not done yet. <laughs> okay. There's the next step. It just keeps growing. Yep. And you want to press carefully and trim carefully mm -hmm. every step of the way. All right. Oops, that's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah, that's, okay, that's, that's it. Okay, that's it. Okay, so that takes care of our log cabin block. The picture block starts with the little sleigh, like that. So cute. So cute. And then it has a light. We add this log, this mm -hmm. log, this log, and this log. And then there's only one more round to go on that one. Nice. Okay. Easy peasy compared okay. to the other one. Yep. Okay, Great. so once you've made your six diamond log cabin blocks and all your set ins, mm -hmm. then the next step is to join two diamond log cabin blocks with the darks to the center, the lights to the outside. And what we've done, this one will go next. So this will give us half of the, the star. Mm -hmm. But the important thing we want to point out is what we did when we made this. And I want to get a real good shot of this. Let's turn it over to this one. I think it shows better. Is that we marked with a pencil where our seams end, because it's not like a square. You can't just eyeball that quarter right. inch in. Right. And when we stitched, and I'm going to demonstrate, you start here, stitch to that point, stop with your needle down, and we have an auto pivot mm -hmm. function on our machine that really helps that, and then turn around and go out to the right. end. And the reason that you start sewing about an inch away from that little end point is because, and, and remind me if, I mean, mm -hmm. tell me if this is right, is that you don't want to end with your threads hanging loose on that point. It'll correct? come out. It'll, come, It'll out. come out. So you need to start about an inch away from your point, sew to it, have the needle down, pivot it. Well, okay. Yeah. We're going to do it in a second. <laughs> right. yeah. And then sew all right. the way out to the end. And the reason we do that is then when we set our block in, we have something to sew to. We haven't, we've got a full seam it's allowance. It's open. Okay. The door is open for okay. you. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew well, let's see. I think we're going to go, yeah, we're going to move to that one because okay. we're going to take one where we are setting in. Okay. Right. So here is a sample where we've got our threesies. We've got our three mm -hmm. diamonds. Half the poinsettia. Half the poinsettia is there. We've put the angel in and now we're ready to put the little um, sleigh in. So mm -hmm. here's, here's, my, here's my goal here is to set this in. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put them right sides together and I'm going to pin match mm -hmm. through yeah. here to get these together. And because I've got my, my piece marked, I know where I'm going. Right. Okay. You know where you're going know, in life. I know where I'm going. <gasps> and it's quilting. You have goals. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that goes on there. And I'm bending this back so that you can, that it's lined up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so great. I'm going to put this in. I'm going to start with the awkward side, and I think I want another couple pins. A few more pins. Yes. All right. And anytime you're you're doing a technique where you're setting in a block or a setting in a, in a point, you're mm -hmm. always going to do that sewing to the edge, but not going all the way. This right. is the technique you'll if you're doing it this way, you'll you'll always leave that leave that those ends open. And I've got a line to go by when I first sew this and. The thing is, we used to do this. We used to hand piece this way. And mm -hmm. I hope, you know, we do our best, we try to do our best song on TV, but it's, it's not always the same as well, at home. So I'm, yeah. I'm just giving this just in case, just, <laughs> just in case. Okay, so everybody can see, I'm gonna stitch, and I'm, I'm gonna use my needle down feature, so I, oh, I nailed it perfectly. Sure. Okay, so I'm gonna sew to that, just one final stitch. Then mm -hmm. I'm gonna turn it around, and now I've got the less awkward way to sew. Right. Okay? And I'm going to sew now with my quarter inch seam. I'm going to be careful as I cross this seam so that it doesn't flip backwards. And this is a long seam. We wish we could make this entire project on the show, but we don't have time it takes to sew, a little bit longer to than sew that. these long seams. 
Yeah, it's not a project you'll get done in one day, but maybe while, you know, the Christmas cookies are baking yes. and you're waiting for company to arrive, you know. Start in July. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> exactly. Okay. Now, on the out here, I can go all the way to the end because my set in is in the center. Okay. And you sew to that. Don't go okay. too. Oh, yeah. Okay. I can sew across yeah. there, I'm pretty right. sure. Okay. All right, so now. Let's take this and out. And if yours didn't come out just perfect, Mom, we've got a whole other one to show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so now mm -hmm. I'm great. ready to then turn my block this way. Right. And you can see that. Oh, no, yeah, you did sew all the way. No, no, no. you didn't. You nope. did it. I can you turn did it great. around, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so now I'm going to turn scared. it around. Yeah. <laughs> well, we worried about that. So now what I'm going to do is pin this end. And I may have sewn just a little bit too far, but it's no, I didn't. It's you did, actually you did pretty okay. good. Okay, so when in doubt, sew so just a little bit away from the from right. that cross. You and know, just don't quite get there. Yeah. And if you look real close, you yeah, can see you I'm it. one stitch shy, which is really good. So I'm going to pin this, and I would do the same thing. And I think we've got time. Maybe I can't finish it. I can at least start it here to show this how this works. Mm -hmm. Is I'm going to start here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stitch to that point. Oh, it's just perfect. I can't believe it. And then turn around and go back. I can believe it, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Probably so can't I start the with the thing, with the um, the awkward side. Right. Over to the left, I, and I can see that mark in the foot. I've got it's right in there. Needle down. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm going to stitch, stitch, stitch. I think I can do one more. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get greedy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't. I now I actually am on the awkward side. Yeah. No, I really. Okay. I would have. I should have started from the other side. So we'll just see here. This. I'm actually. I'm kind of embarrassed to admit this. I'm kind of guessing at my quarter inch seam. But you think after 30 years I could sort of guess that. So let's just pull it out. Sure. And take a look. And what you get. Oops. This is only partly done. Right. But let's just see. Is oh, it came out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, it's good. great. Once you I want everybody to see this. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So the looks... fabrics are pretty forgiving. If you didn't do a very good job, True. it might not look too bad. True. Okay. So you set those in. So right. now, what you get is okay. So half, this right? this is the half that goes toward everybody out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you'd put this half on, that would go this way. A bit. Yeah. This way. Gorgeous. Okay. So when you join. You would do again, you would join this so that you have those open mm -hmm. seams at the end mm -hmm. and you'd set these in, only we'd turn this guy this okay, way. Right. <laughs> and that's it. Beautiful. Grab a pencil, tips and other useful information coming up next. Our first tip today is from Angela Chapel from Mifflinburg, Pennsylvania, and this is really a great idea if you're making a table topper like we did on today's program and you're going to want to uh, put hot dishes on it like you sure. might want to, right. instead of using batting as your filler, which we normally do, mm -hmm. get some insulated uh, batting, insulated filler, and it is designed to withstand the heat and protect uh, your wood uh, uh, or tile mm -hmm. or your surface of your table from high heat. It's a great tip. Okay. This next tip also has to do with the project that we worked on today. You know, when you fussy cut a piece of fabric like this, you get your Swiss cheese and you could throw out the rest of the fabric that you have in between those holes or you could be creative like our sewing specialist Cindy uh, was and use those pieces for another project. And she fussy cut out the rest of the sleighs there mm -hmm. and sewed them to a towel for use in the uh, kitchen or the bathroom, anything like that. You can make a decorative towel out of uh, scraps of fabric. Good idea. Yeah. It's good. Okay, I've got a real neat tip here from Terry Hoff from Dolores, Colorado. I think this is a great idea. When you're uh, working at your design wall and you want to pin the pieces of your quilt on the wall, uh, sometimes your pin cushion is far away. Mm -hmm. So she puts her pin cushion on a lanyard around her neck, fills it with pins, and she can pin her whole quilt up there and not be running back and forth or holding too many pins in her mouth. Yeah, that can be dangerous. I think she's got her quilt guild uh, on the yeah. lanyard part of that. Yeah, too. cool. Dolores, from, yeah, Dolores Mountain Quilters. Cool. Very good. Yeah. Uh, this next tip is awesome. It's a very green, eco-friendly tip from Pat Cuyafici in Apple Valley, California. She uses her free motion practice pieces uh, for re reusable grocery bags. So she takes oh. all the, the pieces that she practiced on with her machine quilting and just uses them for something uh, smart and definitely green. And I love it. You could even take it on a trip to the beach. Yeah, it's really neat because, uh, you know, it's more fun if you're practicing, if you're really going to use that.
set for something. Mm -hmm. uh, this is from Missy Carpenter from Urbandale, Iowa, and she found this neat hang folder. This this would hang, you know, in a hang file, mm -hmm. and so she found that it is perfect size for a magazine mm -hmm. and the templates and everything that you need for making that quilt. Great. Yeah, I great like tip. It. Yeah, you can see right through it. We love getting all these great tips from you. It seems like there are always things we haven't heard of before. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and also, if you send us the little prop that we can use on the show, that's a big help too. So you can mail them to Tips, Fonz and Porter, P.O. Box 171, Winterset, Iowa 50273, or you can go to the tip section of our website, FonzandPorter.com, and send them via email. And if we use one of your tips on a future show, you'll get a one-year free subscription to our magazine, Fonz and Porter's Love of Quilting. Thanks so much for watching today. We'll see you soon. Additional quilting ideas from Marianne and Liz are available in Fonz and Porter's Love of Quilting magazine. A one-year subscription contains 60 or more projects, easy to follow step-by-step -step instructions, and our tips, techniques, and shortcuts. In addition to the magazine, you'll get two DVDs containing all 13 shows from the 1600 series and two additional booklets with extra projects, tips, and techniques. The cost is $29.97. To order, call 866-729-9601 or visit our website, FonzandPorter.com. You can visit our website for free quilt tips, so easy quilting lessons, and slideshows of spectacular quilts. Download free quilt patterns, see supply lists for TV projects, join our quilting community, and more. Log on to FonzandPorter.com. Funding for Fonz and Porter's love of quilting is provided by... For over 40 years, Babylock has been dedicated to the love of sewing by creating machines for sewing, embroidery, quilting, and serging. Baby Lock for the love of sewing. Koala Studios delivers sewing furniture custom built in America. American Professional Quilting Systems, APQS, offers a full line of hand guided quilting machines made in America's heartland for America's artisans. The Oliso ProZone Smart Iron featuring the Auto Lift, engineered for the professional quilter and sewing enthusiast. Endover Fabrics, makers of a variety of fabrics available at independent quilt shops and fabric stores. Coates and Clark, your source for sewing and quilting threads. OmniGrid, providing quilters with specialty rulers and accessories for over 25 years. Quilters Club of America, offering patterns and videos to the passionate quilter.